Today on 5th Floor Exotics, we show you step by step how to set up a bioactive vivarium. The first step in setting up your vivarium is to do some research on your pets. In this case, we're setting up a new tank for our poison dart frogs. They require a high humidity and a moderate temperature. A glass lid will be required to keep the humidity in. The frogs have outgrown this tank, so it's time to move on to something a little larger. Instead of starting with a brand new Exoterra, we're going to show you how to clean up a used one. You might be able to save a lot of money by finding one online or getting one from a friend. However, when dealing with a used tank, you never really know what you're getting yourself into. For real though, let us take a look at the situation. The front of the vivarium has some tape and some stickers. On the top here you can see some damage from a heat lamp. Inside the tank, there is heavy calcium staining. It's so bad that you can barely see Brucey on the other side of the glass. This type of staining is caused by using tap water to mist your animals. We now use distilled or reverse osmosis and we avoid having this problem. Regular soap and water won't work to remove the stains, so we use a mixture of one part water to one part vinegar and a whole lot of scrubbing. It took about 20 minutes to get this thing crystal clear. You can see inside the calcium staining is gone. Dart frogs are a sensitive species, so it was really important not to use any harsh chemicals to clean this. Now that the tank is clean, we're going to show you how to create your own glass lid. Here we have glass from an old picture frame, a glass cutter, some masking tape, and there's our old screen there, we're not using that anymore. Start by masking off the glass at the edge of your vivarium. This is where you will be cutting your glass, so ensure that it is not too long or too short. Here you can see me rolling the glass cutter along the edge of the tape. This glass is from a dollar store picture frame and the glass cutter only costs $5. When you're done cutting, the glass should just snap apart. The glass wasn't the perfect size to cover the entire top, but that's okay because we need that space for ventilation anyway. For now, I'll use the extra piece of glass just to cover that extra space. Our Exeter is all cleaned up and as good as new. The vivarium is in place and now it's time to fill this thing up. For our supplies, we go to the local Reptile Expo. The Toronto Reptile Expo is fairly large and happens every couple months. So here you can see that we picked up some essentials for our vivarium. Over here we have some isopods, they're important for our cleanup crew. This here is what we call a Buddha nut, it's used for a hide for our poison dart frogs. We have a little bit of moss, some chocolate aspicia for our plant, plant bicolor peperomia. Back here we have some cork bark that we're going to use so the frogs can jump in and out of the holes here. Below that we have some bio balls and some other substrate, another plant we're going to use, a little fuzzy. This is a sensitive plant, if you touch the leaves it'll uh, they'll close up. The next step is to set up the drainage layer, so we add some bio balls and a layer of screen to separate it from the next layer of soil. For our soil we have an arboreal porous terrarium mix. The type of soil you use in a bioactive setup is very important to the health of your plants, animals, and insects. With a little research, you can even make the soil yourself. Seen here is a blue tube that I've added to siphon any water that might make it to the drainage layer. For our next layer of substrate, we'll be adding this forest moss. The moss comes in a condensed brick form, so I break it up and I add it to water. Roughly 15 minutes later, we have a mulch and we're ready to add it to our terrarium. Our moss layer is now complete, so it's time to move on to some decorations. At last, our vivarium is finally starting to take shape. At this point, it's important to make sure that your decorations are secure and that they won't fall down and hurt your pets. Now we can start adding some life to our vivarium. Our cleanup crew is going to consist of springtails and orange scabbard isopods. These guys are responsible for cleaning up any waste or dead material. And finally we're able to add our plants and toppings. 
You can do this to your own taste, but keep your plant's requirements in mind. In this vivarium, we use various types of moss. Hopefully, as the moss grows, it will cover everything in the tank. Now that the vivarium is set, we can let it sit for a month or two to let it establish itself. It's important to remember to use LED or fluorescent lighting to keep your plants alive, but we'll be covering that in a future video. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial from 5th Floor Exotics. Please like and subscribe.